Hey guys and girls, welcome back to a, another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box, all the nice links, support page, Twitter, Discord. Also, uh, drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. So, today I thought we'd keep working with the button class because we kind of have to make the, make sure we can click on stuff and, and go, go on into the game state. I like doing this stuff first, although it's not the most fun stuff to do. But let's make a really, really basic button class. We'll be working with this uh, a bunch um, in the coming videos. So what I want to do is I just want to make sure I have a basic button class. Now, uh, SF rectangle shape should be what I want. Uh, but we didn't include all the stuff we need. So let's just make sure we do that. So we have our button.h. Let's go into our main menu state. Uh, where I'm including button. Now I kind of want button to be, I kind of want it to be independent from everything else. Okay, so there's a, there's a plus side to having stuff independent, uh, not including, chain including everything, you know? Um, so I need to find the file. Here we go. So this is where we have all our stuff. So I'm just going to copy everything and I'm going to put it into button.h. And we're not going to use all of this. Probably not C time. I see a state layer, but we'll see. Probably not file stream. Um, string stream, we might. Vector, no stack, no map, no system window. <clears throat> audio network, no. Maybe audio later on. Maybe we want to click sound or something. We'll keep it like this for now. It's not the best way because we'll multiple, we'll have um, similar includes in different files, but you know. Sometimes it's important to do that. Uh, rectangle shape. So we'll just call it shape here. And that's going to be the button's basic shape. Okay. Now we're going to need a few things. We're going to need uh, a font and all that stuff. Um, which we probably haven't worked with yet. That's what we're going to need. So, so let's see. Well, let's just start off with the basic button. I'm going to make a SF font, font pointer font, if I can type today, there we go. And then I'm just going to think really quickly here, hmm, let's see, what do I want to do? Basically SF text, because that's what we're going to display, it's going to be our button text. All right, and a problem I have with button classes is the constructors get pretty long if you want to customize them, okay? And some most of the time you probably want to customize them, but what I want to do right now, like I said, is make a really simple button class uh, just so we can click on it. So I'm going to use a SF color, idle color, SF color uh, hover, hover color. Any SF color um, active color. So I'm kind of using these CSS names um, because when we're pressing a button, it should kind of be a different color. When we're hovering on it, should be different, and idling should be different. Okay. Now we can make all kinds of cool stuff with buttons later. We'll just use this for now. And I'm not using something like I'm GUI or something like that, or im GUI, whatever you want to call it, uh, because I kind of want you to program you know you just want to code mostly everything yourself because that's fun all right we'll probably use mgui for the editor and stuff later but we'll see um so here you go very basic we got the text the font shape all that stuff so we'll just leave it at that um now we'll go into the cpp or we'll stay here and let's see i want to create some functions so we're probably going to have a void render function, okay? SF render target, target as usual, all right? So we'll just define this like that. Boom, easy peasy. Then we're going to pretty much ask how big this should be. So float or the position, float x, float y, 
uh, float width, float height. And we'll just decide the colors later uh, if we want. We'll, we'll decide them at the end. We'll give them some default values. So these are important, position and width and height. Uh, then we want the text, std string text, okay? We probably want the font before that, sf font, font pointer, font, std string text. Okay, so we got a font pointer, a text, and then what else do we need? We need the colors. So basically, we can do this, sf color just for now, idle color, okay? And then we're going to set everything to idle color and just kind of minimize stuff later. Oh, you know what? Why not? Why not just, why not, why not, why not do this? Why not do this? We'll just, we'll do all three, okay? We'll do all three. We'll just split these up. It'll be easier to look at. So idle color, hover color, and then active color. Could be nice, right? Could be real nice. So there we go. Um, very nice. I'm just going to copy all of these. And I put it into this constructor here. And that's nice. That's really nice. Um, I do want to just think for a minute. Okay. So this shape dot set size SF vector 2F. And then we're just going to put width and hide in here because the, the rectangle shape is just going to keep the buttons data, right? Basically the position and the shape. And then above that, I'm just going to do this shape dot set position SF vector 2F um, X and Y. Boom. Easy peasy is just like that. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. And then this font equals font. This text. Um, and then we're just going to do all the text stuff down here. Let me just do all the, actually, I just want to do all the color stuff as well. But let's just start with the text, I guess. This text.set font. Okay, this is the actual SF text object. Okay, so we're going to set its font to this font. Okay, and I do want to save the font as a pointer in here. It doesn't take much. It's, it's good to do. I like doing it because you can kind of play around with it later if you want. Uh, this text dot set string and then we're just going to set that to the text variable this pointer or this uh, local variable here and then this text obviously we don't have a text color yet this um, text set fill color sf color white I'm just going to put it to white because it always works um, this text dot set Character size, let's set it to 12 for now. And then the position we're going to have to play around with. Since we did the size and the position here, if you want to put it in the middle, okay, if you want to put your text in the middle, you're going to have to do some fiddling around. And we're going to do that just after we do this. Uh, this idle color equals idle color. This uh, hover color color blah 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 you know the gist of it uh, active color active color all that shit um, I do want to set this shape dot set fill color this idle color just to give it a nice starting color here okay now we want to set the text position to the middle and this is kind of tricky so this text dot set position okay so get ready here Get your butt cheeks ready, sit tight, and let's try to figure this out. So we have the character, we have the text position, which is zero, zero, and we have the text size, okay? So if you want to put it at the center of the box, let's start off by putting it at the center of the shape, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this text set position is this shape dot get position, okay? Get position x. All right, uh, divided by 2.f. All right, that's going to give me the center x, just like that. So we'll start there, and then the y is going to be this shape dot get position 
position y divided by 2.0. So now we're at the center, basically. But remember, the text has its, it's, it's basically a shape, all right, with a bunch of text. And it's basically a rectangle with a bunch of shape. And it has its own size, depending on how many characters you have in this character size. So it's going to get a little bounding box around it. Now, the top left corner is the position. So when we set the text position to um, to this, the top left corner is going to be at the center of the shape. So the text isn't going to be centered technically, all right? But technically it is kind of because it's top left is at the center. Now we just want to kind of move it a little bit to the right or to the left and a little bit up, okay? And what we're going to do then is we're going to divide it by two and then we're going to say minus this text dot get size uh, get size no I think it is get global bounds dot width okay so we're gonna get the width divided by 2.0 okay so we're gonna minus that and then we're just gonna copy paste this and just paste it down here and instead of width we're gonna do height boom bada bing we good all right we good there you go there you got a centered text on your button all right, hopefully this is going to work. I'm not sure because I'm dumb, but we'll see. We'll see. That's why you're watching my videos because you never know what's going to happen. And it's full of surprises. Okay, you got a bunch of crap here and we don't know what's going to do. But there we go. Now to render, we're just going to say target uh, draw for some reason. Hey, that it says draw render sounds so much cooler. This shape. Boom. Easy peasy. Look at that. Easy peasy. Okay. Now, we can render a button and we can create a button at a certain position. Uh, we do have some stuff, but we can't really click it yet. All right, we can't really click it yet. So what I want to do is I want to create a void update button or update thing. And we're just going to make a SF vector 2F. This is where we're going to start using uh, our things what do you call it um or should we do button get pressed get pressed okay i'm just going to get pressed hmm or should we have one update function that constantly rolls around yeah i think that's better since we then we don't have to do a bunch of shit but okay so we'll have an update thing here vector 2f mouse pulse any type of mouse position is going to be our thing and then we're just gonna do this create a definition and before we end the video I'm just gonna go ahead in here and I'm gonna do something I have the mouse position um, that's good let's do it constant here since we're gonna be sending it in a lot uh, hopefully that's gonna work pretty sure it should not sure if it's good to do vector 2f with a reference though you know what? we're not gonna do the reference right now we're just gonna leave it like this okay so basically what the update function is going to do uh, is going to update the booleans for hover and pressed okay so basically like that, and we're going to make a nice little class here. So it's basically going to say if this shape dot get global bounds dot contains mouse position, we're going to do something. Okay. If it contains something, we're going to do something. So basically this will be the hover. And then we're going to check if the mouse has been clicked, it's going to be pressed. Okay. So before I leave you, I just want to say we're going to be creating some Booleans in here and we're going to keep working on this in the next video. Okay. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, soon enough, we'll get to all the nice, juicy, fun stuff where we'll do animations and all that. Please stick with me, I promise. We just got to do all this engine stuff a little bit first. Okay, so thank you so much. Take care. Check out the description box. And hopefully, I'll see you on Discord and all that stuff as well. And, yeah, I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. All right, bye-bye.